Welcome to Unit 2, Cell Structure and Function. For our first video, we're going to go over uh, basics of the cell, structure, function, as well as subcellular components of a cell, like organelles. So this is Units 2.1 and 2.2 of AP Biology. So let's start with some basic questions. First of all, what is a cell? Then what is the cell theory? Why do organisms have cells? What types of cells are there? And what do all cells have in common? So we'll answer some of these questions later in this presentation, um, but let's start with that first one. What is a cell? So the cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of an organism. Um, there are some organisms that are just a single cell and other organisms like us that are comprised of many, many cells. Uh, something to keep in mind is that the very basics, a cell is an area that is different on the inside and the outside. So thinking about how is it different on the inside and the outside, and how is that difference maintained? How do we get in? Uh, how do we get materials from one side of the cell to the other side in a way that um, keeps balance, but also keeps that separation from inside versus outside? All right, let's go on to cell theory. So cell theory has three parts. Let's see if you know what those are. So the first part is that the cell is the smallest living unit in all organisms. The second part is that all living things are made of cells. And then the third part of modern cell theory is that all cells come from other pre-existing cells. All right, there are two main types of cells or two categories of cells that I'd like us to um, take a look at. So look at these diagrams. What are similarities and differences you notice between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? And also, what is the significance of the red boxes and the purple stars on this diagram? So one of the major differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is the existence of membrane-bound organelles. Um, so membrane-bound organelles, if you look at the eukaryotic cell, um, includes the ones that are starred. So mitochondria, they actually have two uh, membranes, vesicles, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, lysosome, Golgi complex, as well as the nucleus. And the nucleus is another really defining difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotes have a nucleus, prokaryotes do not. The red boxes um, are highlighting some of the similarities between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So all of them have a membrane, all of them have ribosomes, all of them have cytosol, and all of them have genetic material um, in some form. Um, prokaryotes are single-celled, and um, our examples are, examples are bacteria. Eukaryotes can be single-celled or multicellular and include protists, fungi, animals, and plants. All right, so let's go over two terms that are really easy to mix up. Cytoplasm and cytosol. What are the definitions of these? So cytoplasm is all of the material inside the cell membrane other than the nucleus, and that includes the organelles as well. Cytosol is the liquid part of the cytoplasm, so that doesn't include the nucleus or the organelles. And the reason I have a picture of some soup here um, is an analogy. So you can think of cytoplasm as the soup. So if it's like chicken noodle soup, it includes the broth, but it also includes the chicken and the noodles and all, this ve all the veggies. Whereas cytosol, the equivalent would be just the broth. So let's go into a little bit more detail about some of those subcellular components. Let's look at organelles. So organelles are part of the cytoplasm of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. But what's the definition of organelle? And also, as a review from just a moment ago, um, how are organelles in eukaryotic, in eukaryotic cells different from those in prokaryotic cells? So the definition of an organelle is a tiny cellular structure that performs a specific function within a cell. And in eukaryotic cells, organelles are often enclosed by their own membrane. Remember, that's one of the definitions of eukaryotic cells, is membrane-bound organelles. So for each of the cell components that's listed on the slides that I'm about to show you, you need to know the name, the basic structure and function of the organelle, as well as what might happen to the cell if that organelle malfunctioned, and if or how that organelle relates to gene expression. So here is a somewhat overwhelming list of um, organelles, 
And I will uh, provide this information on uh, Quizlet as well so that you can learn all of the organelles and their definitions. Um, this is important information because if you have an understanding of what part of the cell does what, it's going to be much easier for us to use these names and that'll help trigger understanding of those concepts. Um, so these are going to be important throughout the rest of the year in AP Biology, which is why I want you to learn them now. So here's the answer to all of these um, from the top plasma membrane all the way down to um, cilia. Um, so I, again, I want you to spend some time learning these, but we're not going to go over those in detail during this video. I also want you to be able to recognize some of the major organelles visually. So take a look at these pictures and make sure you understand um, how the sort of structure of an organelle relates to its function. So once you've become familiar with the structure and function of all of the different organelles, it's going to be important to understand how they work together. So take a look at this slide and see if you can make some observations. What's happening here? So one of the best tricks I can give you to understand a complicated diagram or a complicated piece of text is make sure you use the title if it's provided. So the title of this slide is Protein Pathways. So what we're looking at is the different journeys a protein can make from beginning to end. So if we look at the very top orange box here, we see that it says ribosomes initiate translation in the cytosol. So what it's showing here is that the um, ribosome is reading the mRNA and is starting to produce a protein. We can see that with newly forming polypeptide. So then one of two things happens, as indicated by that branching arrow. If we look at the orange box on the left, we can see one possibility is that the ribosome connects to the ER, right? And rough ER is where we have ribosomes attached. So if that ribosome becomes attached, then it finishes out the protein production into the ER. So that protein is then inside of the ER. Then that protein can uh, be transferred to the Golgi complex and then be transferred to secretory vesicles, lysosomes, or plasma membrane. So if we look over at the box on the right as a comparison, we see that this protein never goes to the ER. The, the ribosome never goes to the ER, so that the protein is produced in the cytosol. So then that protein ends up either remaining in the cytosol or going into um, one of the organelles within the, um, within the cell. All right, so what's the big difference here? What we're seeing is that there are sort of two major possibilities of how the protein is made, either in the ER or in the cytosol, and what that affects is where that protein is going to end up. So if it ends up in a vesicle or in the membrane or being released, like the vesicle releases it from the cell, right, then that, that kind of protein is made in the ER. Whereas proteins that end up staying in the cell itself, right, inside one of the organelles or inside the cytosol, those proteins don't need to be made in the ER. They can just stay being made in the cytosol. So what is it that tells the, the um, protein, what is it that gives the cell the information of which proteins to make in the ER and which ones to make in the uh, cytosol? Take a look at this slide again and see if there are any clues on that. So one clue you might notice is that we haven't looked at that diagram on the very left side of this slide. And here you see um, a very rough diagram of a cell. We're not seeing most of the organelles of the cell. All we see is the cytosol and the ER, and we see a, uh, two different proteins. That green protein says it's a cytosolic protein with no signal sequence. And then inside the ER, we see an ER protein, and on that has an ER signal sequence. So what this is showing you is that there can be a um, piece of information on the protein itself that directs where that protein will be made. And where that protein will be made influences where that protein ends up. So all of these organelles are kind of working together, right? The ribosomes and the ER, and then all of those follow-up organelles of wherever that protein ends up. Everything's working together to make sure that the right molecules end up in the right spot. All right, let's put your knowledge to the test. See if you can complete this slide. So the first thing to notice, and again, this is involving reading the titles, it says identify the organelle 
doesn't say identify the organelles, identify the organelle. So we're looking for a single organelle here. Um, so a clue in what organelle we're talking about is in that very first line, I think is the, the best clue, or the very first sentence rather. So it says that this is the central organ of, or, organelle of the secretory pathway. And the central organelle of the secretory pathway is the Golgi apparatus. And so then it goes on to talk about the impact that the, um, a disruption in the Golgi apparatus can have in this particular um, example. So um, we'll have more examples like this throughout the year where we're taking your knowledge and then applying it to a specific situation. So it's really important that you learn the basics, that you memorize all of those functions of the organelles, but please don't stop there. You really need to be able to take the knowledge and then apply it to specific situations like this. So this is the end of our first video of Unit 2, which is all about cell structure and function.